So, how are you doing today? Like, really think about that. How are you doing? I know we're, we're oftentimes asked that question, and maybe because we're busy, we don't really think anybody really wants to know how we're doing. We just say, I'm good. I'm fine. You know, we move on with our day. But do we ever really spend the time to acknowledge and search our hearts and search our minds to think about how we're doing? I think sometimes we would rather just not acknowledge it, not go to those places in our hearts and our minds that are oftentimes filled with some bitterness or some anxiety or some fear. You know, we'd rather just not acknowledge it. We'd rather just say, I'm good. At least pretend that everything is okay. You know, it reminds me of the woman. There's a true story from Ness City, Kansas. Got the news report right here. Who sat on her boyfriend's toilet for two years. Yes, for two whole years, she sat on her boyfriend's toilet. And I understand, like some parents right now with small kids are like, that would be wonderful, right? I know, like when I was a kid, my dad would go to the bathroom and I'd be like, dad, come on, we got to play hockey. Like, come out, we got things to do. I'm like, there's no way you're still going. What, how is this possible? And then, now I realized that was kind of like the one place he could go and not be bothered. There's the one place he could go to get some peace and quiet. But there were no kids around in this woman's or her boyfriend's house where this woman was. She just self-isolated her for herself for two straight years. And her boyfriend every day would get, would knock on the door and say, Hey, honey, I think it's time to come out. You ready to come out? She says, mm, perhaps tomorrow. Perhaps tomorrow. She, he would take her food. He, he took care of her. Then finally, finally, he had enough. He had enough. He was like, okay, this enough is enough. And he called the sheriff and he explained, okay, I need some help. There's a situation here. I need your help. And so the sheriff shows up and he knocks on the door. He knocks on the, the bathroom door and says, hey, we're here to help. Here to help. We're here to get you out of there. And uh, the woman says, I'm fine. You can go home. I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. She says, I am good. I'm good. Well, the sheriff wasn't taking that I'm good as an answer. He knew she wasn't okay. And so he went in there and pried her off of that toilet. Yes, she had sat there for so long, just grown so accustomed to being in that mess. Everything seemed fine, okay? And that she was there for so long that her, her skin had physically grown around the toilet. This is what the sheriff says. She says she was not glued. She was not tied. She was just physically stuck by her body. It's hard to imagine. I still have a hard time imagining it myself the sheriff says yes and yet you know as crazy as that story seems i think it illustrates oftentimes our lives and the fact that that we live in messes and we are stuck to things that we've just grown so accustomed to they just become normal to us whether it be an addiction to an alcohol to to pain medications to drugs to you know a, a dependence on somebody else or, or dependence on food, or, or it could be anxiety and depression and you know bitterness, guilt, shame, just stuff that we've dealt with for so long. We just think it's fine. We're no, it's normal. Everything, you know, I struggle with that. Everyone else struggles with this. So it's all good. And we don't actually do the homework, the work that we need to do to acknowledge it and to find freedom from it. Now, I'll admit, several years ago, I was working for a church and I started struggling with anxiety and depression. And like, I mean, as a pastor, I was like, I can't, I can't like tell people about this. This isn't like something that pastors go through. This isn't something a follower of Jesus could experience. I've got to, I got to pretend that everything's together. I got everything figured out, and you know, I'm just holding on for dear life. But you know, I'm saying I'm good. I'm good. And then one day, my boss sat me down and says, "Everyone knows you're not okay, Sean. You know, you need help. You're not healthy." And he said, "But Sean, you need to understand." It's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. And, and once I, I heard that, I, I started really kind of thinking about, okay, so if it's okay not to be okay, what do I need to do? What do I need to do to acknowledge that I'm not okay, to find freedom from the things that are keeping me from being good, from being well, from experiencing the abundant life that Jesus died in order to, to give me? And it was a long process couple years getting out of that depression but man I've learned some things along the way and one thing I've learned is there's no healing in hiding and that we are only as sick as our secrets 
And there are things in our lives that maybe we're oblivious to just because we've grown so accustomed to it. But if we spend the time really examining our hearts, examining our minds, reading God's word and allowing it to read us, we can experience the abundant life, the peace, the joy, the patience, God's goodness that he wants us to experience. But one of the first steps we need to take in order to find healing from our hurts, hangups, and bad habits is acknowledge that we're not okay. It reminds me of the freedom that King David experienced through this process. He chronicles part of the process with us in Psalm chapter 32 when he says this. He says, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groanings all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not, conf did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. You know, see, this is after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba, after he had sent her husband to the battlefield, to the front lines of the, of the battle so that he would die, pretty much committing murder, and then just try to cover everything up. Didn't want to acknowledge it, thought, okay, if I just cover my base, if I just kind of sweep it on the rug, everything will be fine. But he found himself just shackled by all this guilt. You know, it's the same that we experience, whether it's the pain that other people have caused us, that now we feel shame, and now we just feel bitter about, or, or, or we feel we were locked up in, in guilt because of something we've done to other people. We just don't want to, we don't want to acknowledge it. We don't want to ask for forgiveness. Or, or, or we're just shackled by addictions, right, to pornography, to, to codependency, to, you know, dependent on someone else and a relationship with them. And we need, we need them and we need their affirmation in order to be good and to be happy and to be satisfied. You know, whatever it is, okay, pay attention to it. Don't, don't, don't pretend it doesn't exist. I know our pride wants to make us think that we're good, that we're fine. And we end up not acknowledging the very thing that is sucking the life out of us, the very thing that we're stuck to, that we're dependent on. And so we can't be dependent and, and satisfied and secure in the love of God. And, you know, James tells us in James 5, 16, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Yeah, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. And so the first step to, to experience the abundant life that Jesus died in order for us to give, to give us, okay, is number one, acknowledging that we're sinners, that we need God's forgiveness, we need his grace, surrendering your life to him in the waters of baptism, and then continually, okay, is searching your heart, doing, doing an inventory of your heart and your mind, saying, okay, so what are some other things that I've not experienced freedom from? You know, the fears, the, the, the bitterness, whatever it is, acknowledge it to God, confess it to God, and then go to somebody you trust and share it with them as well, and, and then pray with them about it. You know, at New Life, we have a, a specific ministry called Celebrate Recovery that helps people find healing from their hurts, hangups, and bad habits. And not for, like, those people, like those people who are just strung out on drugs or really messed up. We're all messed up. We're all broken. We all need healing. We all need a place to go and people that we can confide in. And right now, our Celebrate Recovery isn't meeting in person. I'm one of the leaders, and so we're meeting on Zoom on Friday nights. And, well, if you would in be interested in being part of one of our share groups, you can email cr at newlife.church and we will we will run you through the protocol, the orientation to what it is and to how, you know, what share group is all about, how you do it. Okay. And then once we're meeting back in person, we'd love to see you on a Friday night in person at the end zone at 7 p.m. to get a lesson, to hear a testimony, and then just be around a group of people who understand that it's okay not to be okay. A group of people who will be there for you to share what they're going through and be, be willing to hear what you're going through and pray for you and help you find healing from your hurts, your hangups, your bad habits. Don't pretend that everything's okay. Understand, it's okay not to be okay. God, God loves you. He wants to, to heal you. His, his son died on a cross in order for you to experience that abundant life. All right, let me pray for us and ask God to take one step closer to that life today. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, I, I thank you for the fact that your son Jesus came into our world, into our brokenness, into our pain, into our shame. You know what we're going through. You, 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 you are not content for us to continue to just live there and to be stuck to all these things that keep us shackled up in, in bitterness and in, in guilt and whatever it might be. But you, you sent your son to die so that we could acknowledge our sin and not pretend that everything's okay, but to swallow our pride and to find freedom in your love, in your grace, in your redemption, God. I ask that you would help us to speak to us, to open up our hearts and our minds to the things that oftentimes are hard to see, maybe some things in our lives that we would rather pretend not to acknowledge, pretend that what they weren't even there. Pray that you would open up our, the eyes of our hearts to be able to see those things that are keeping us from you, from loving you, from putting our hope in you, from experiencing your abundant life, God. Help us have the pride to admit it, to confess it to you and to someone we trust. We thank you for Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.